In my last video, I showed off this robot. This is my acrobatic robot, and I very much want to work on it more, but I have to do a bunch of research on how to program it first. So while I'm doing that research, I still want to do mechanical design. So I'm going to build a Tiki Bird. As with any animatronic build, you first need to determine what you want it to look like. So for this guy, I did some drawing. I started down here and did some coloring and said, yeah, that looks okay. And then it just went downhill from there. That has a really weird body shape. I couldn't get these quite right. This one's better, but the head shape still feels wrong. These were starting to get better. And then I somehow turned one into a cat. I somehow turned one into a seagull from Finding Nemo. That one has a really hooked beak. It kind of reminds me of like the ravens from Splash Mountain or Snow White. This one turned into a turkey, and then I finally got one that I like, and I went for the color scheme of green, blue, and yellow, and we'll discuss why that is in a minute, but the hook is the right shape, and I realized that what I was missing in all these head designs was that this line right here curves back, and their head is in a circle with a beak protruding. Also here, I did some tail designing. Now I went for the color scheme of yellow, green, and blue because I don't want to individually feather this bird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it in this fleecy material. This fleecy material here. And it's stretchy so that as it moves around, the skin can stretch around. And because I don't want it to be pure white like this, and other than dyeing it, I'm going to use this fabric paint here. And this fabric paint I didn't actually expect to work well. But as you can see, I painted this part yellow, and it says stretchy. Still lots of stretch. This part was blue, this part's green, and the green's just a mixture of the yellow and blue. I did a fade there, and you can see it's still super stretchy. And even when sewed, it's still stretchy. So, I'm going to use this fabric paint to paint him. From there... I need to figure out what functions I'm going to give him. So each function requires a motor, so it's important to choose what you want to use carefully because the more you add, the more expensive it gets and the harder to design it gets. So I came up with eight functions, even though this one has more than one motor attached to it. So a tail lift, that's going to move the tail up and down like this. The wing extend and wing flap are interesting because the actual Tiki birds that Disney makes don't do that. I want his wings to be able to extend like a real bird's and then flap up and down. He's not going to be able to fly or anything, that would be ridiculous, but extend and flap, that's something that will be unique to this bird. Then whole body tilt, so just the whole body will tilt side to side. And then the perch rotate I've crossed out here, because I thought it'd be a good idea, and it might still be, but I'm siding on that I'm not going to do it. Then the neck here. This neck will be really interesting because I'm actually going to use a uh, animatronic tail mechanism. So that uses four motors to bend a shaft in a certain way. And that's going to be for his neck because birds can do all sorts of crazy things with their neck. And this will hopefully be able to mimic most of that. Then a head rotate that rests on top so that you can actually rotate. And his beak's going to move in and out. Next up, I came into Blender to actually model the bird. And I really just wanted the details around the face, because that's all I can't do in Fusion 360, which is where I'm going to model the actual mechanical parts. So these here are the beak here and the head, and I used some reference images I found online. But I really need this beak and head to look good, because that's going to be visibly seen on the animatronic. And it doesn't matter that it's so low poly, because when it's 3D printed and sanded and painted, you're never going to notice any of that low poly count. I also modeled the feet here, because that's going to be really hard to do in Fusion if I were to. And this stand here is for him to stand on. It is going to be made out of some bamboo I have. I also have the general shape of his body. Once I finished the model in Blender, I imported it into Fusion 360 to add the mechanical features. So I'm just working with the head for now since that's the most important part. If we look at the functions, I have 
mouth opening and closing here. And then I also have this rotation platform inside and that will allow it to rotate its head. And all of these functions are being driven by Bowden cables, which if you remember from my Prairie Dog videos, Bowden cables didn't work well for me then. What I've changed is I've gotten thicker tubing and thicker string, so hopefully I don't run into the same problems of everything stretching and bending like I did last time. So I have the head, the beak opening, the head rotating, then a four degree of freedom neck, which is an animatronic tail mechanism with two stages and two degrees of freedom per stage. So that adds up to four degrees of freedom. We'll look more at that in the physical model. Speaking of the physical model, let's print these parts out. All the parts we need to build the bird head. No. Now it should be. So I have the tubing and cabling, fishing line, that are going to be used for the boating cables. If you don't know about boating cables, I made a video about them. Um, this is for the flexible part of the neck mechanism. These are the outside head pieces. This one has holes because I want to lighten it. I was going to do it on this side too, but I forgot. So, and I'm not reprinting it, so this is it. These are the guiders for the tail mechanism and neck mechanism. These pulleys here are for the rotation and the beak opening. This is the beak itself. That's a little adapter. These are a bunch of screws, and those are the pound keys. I just realized I forgot all about the servos. That's everything. All the parts laid out nicely. I'm going to assemble it now, and then we'll look at all the mechanics after it's all assembled.
so I ran it for about three minutes, just enough to get a short video clip, and then I noticed that one of these axes on the neck wasn't moving. Turns out this server right here had overheated somehow, so I need to investigate why that happened. So I figured out the problem with the servo, and it's just a bad servo, there's nothing to do about that. So let's take a closer look at all the movements in this bird head. There are six. There is one in the beak here, one so it can turn his head, and four in the neck. So let's start at the top and work our way down. At the very top we have this beak, which is moving right now. And that is um, one of the very simplest movements he has in his head. It is just a pulley system, and it works because the servo in the box here has a pulley on it, and as it spins, it pulls the string. The string runs up the Bowden cable, and then here, there's just another pulley inside his head, which the string is attached to on this end, and the mouth just moves with the servos. That's actually the exact same mechanism to make his head rotate. So there's just a servo inside, and as it rotates, it pulls on the string, the string goes through the tubing, and then transfers force under the pulley on the other end and turns his head around. Then where it gets really interesting is this four degree of freedom neck down here. The way this works is the same way an animatronic tail mechanism works. So this is what would be considered a two stage four degree of freedom neck tail mechanism. Let's break down what that means. So two stages means that we can kind of imagine this like it's two tail mechanisms stacked on top of each other. But what does a tail mechanism consist of? It's really just a flexible material like this, like this foam here. It bends around and compresses. So it's just a flexible material with strings running on four sides of it. The strings that are opposite of each other, so these two and these two, are connected to one pulley on the servo that jet uh, tugs on it. So if I were to move the servo like this, then the string is pulled in one direction and released on the other. So the only thing the foam can do is bend like this. So it has to curve. So by using that, we can curve the neck around and bend it. And because I have it in the vertical axis and the horizontal axis, I can move it in every direction. So if I do this, if I do this, you can see his head rotates that way. If I use the other servo, he rotates back and forth like he's headbanging. Now it's called two stage because I have one of those on top and one of those on the bottom here. So if I operate the bottom one now, you can see it has a much more drastic effect. And then say I want to move the head forward, I can move the bottom one tilting forward and the top one tilting back and now effectively the head moves forward. So on that note with the head now completely working I'm gonna end this video here. So if you want to see the next part be sure to subscribe. If you like this video hit the like button, leave a comment if you have anything to say. See you next time.